Good everyone. Welcome to uh, the chambers uh, moving forward. Mark, you're muted. There we go. I'm back. Yeah, so welcome. Um, a couple people still uh, working their way in. So um, we've got, a, a, I think, a pretty informative uh, topic today. Um, just by way of background, we put together this uh, moving forward webinar series last year to kind of help uh, the members keep informed about the changing regulations in terms of um, COVID and so forth. Um, for this year, what we've trying to do is provide information to help our business members um, reboot, recover, and, and move forward um, as we get to the other side of uh, the pandemic. Um, you know, some good news now, you know, we've got some better weather, so that's a, a nice thing. Um, the vaccination rate is going up, and hopefully the, uh, the positive cases will continue to go down. And uh, that's a good good for uh, for our business uh, community, and for uh, for the chamber also. So um, I forgot to introduce myself. Uh, for you, for those who don't know me, I'm Mark Kleinschmidt. I have the good fortune of being the president here at the Anne Arundel Chamber, and uh, with us is also Amy Amy Berry. She is our Hi. membership coordinator, so a lot of you may have the opportunity to interact uh, with her. So um, why don't we go ahead and, and jump right into this. Uh, today, uh, we're gonna focus on knowing your news. And here in, uh, in Anne Arundel County in Annapolis specifically, we're very fortunate to have a, uh, what I'll call it, pretty much a world-class uh, news organization, like the Capital uh, Gazette. Uh, still a local paper that provides a lot of good local content, uh, reporting and editorial also. So uh, they're gonna talk about how it kind of works to get your business into the news cycle and some um, other questions that you may have. So hopefully we can make this a pretty interactive um, uh, webinar. So with that, let me turn it over to, uh, to Marty Patton, who will uh, get started and then introduce his, uh, his associate. Marty. Thanks, Mark. Good afternoon, everyone. And thanks for joining us for today's Moving Forward webinar hosted by the Anne Arundel County Chamber of Commerce. Um, Rick and I are really happy to be here today. I want to thank everyone who is attending and also want to thank the Anne Arundel County Chamber for allowing us this time to present what we hope will be uh, very useful information. Um, as Mark mentioned, my name is Marty Patton and I'm the Advertising Director for the Capital Gazette. And today I'm joined by the editor of the Capital Gazette, Rick Hutzel. Um, in today's webinar, we're going to discuss how to use local media as a resource that can help small to mid-sized businesses with your day-to-day -day operations and reaching your customers. If you have any questions, please feel free to message us during the presentation and we will be happy to answer your questions either um, at the time or we will allow for Q&A uh, Q period at the end. So with that said, I'm going to turn it over to the editor of the Capital Gazette, Rick Hutzel. Hi, I'm Rick Hutzel. I'm the editor of the Capital, as Marty said. Um, I've been the editor for about five years, but I've been with the Capital uh, since 1987. So I feel like I know uh, Annapolis and Anne Arundel County pretty well. Um, uh, before I was the editor of the Capitol, I was the editor of the Maryland Gazette, our historic paper that is distributed in the northern northwest part of Anne Arundel County. And that's a twice weekly. Well, the Capitol is a daily print publication, as you know, I hope. And um, uh, the, um, you know, but our, our, our focus, like a lot of news organizations right now, is uh, our online presence um, you know in the course of an any, of any day you know you'll see our website uh, add 15 stories uh, you know to our website and they'll cycle through the day these are things that we are both producing with our local news staff and curating from other sources that we have um, you know I can provide some examples for that later if you like we have a staff of uh, seven reporters uh, that's news reporters we have uh, three assignment editors I'm one of them. Uh, we have uh, three members of our sports team, which includes a sports editor and then two sports reporters, one of whom uh, has been covering uh, Navy for more than, uh, has been a part of the community for more than 30 years and has been covering uh, Navy sports for the last 20. Um, and then we have a photography staff as well. We are part of Baltimore Sun Media um, and we do rely on them for some support. We have gotten smaller, um, you know, as, uh, you know, 
economic uh, changes have affected the news industry. Um, we, uh, because we're part of the Baltimore Sun, we have resources of that larger news organization. Uh, we are about 20% of their readership and of, of their resources. Um, we do make our decisions independently. Uh, the opinion page, uh, you know, they, 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 you see things on the opinion page in the Capitol. That's my son walking by. Um, you see things uh, in the opinion page uh, of the Capitol uh, that you don't see in the Sun and, and vice versa. Um, the news decisions, what we cover, there's sort of a, you know, baseball analogy, you know, there's a little bit of uh, uh, signals going on. Hey, we're covering that. You're covering that. Don't do this. We have somebody. Don't leave this alone. We've got it. Um, but the news judgments that we make are based on an understanding of this community and, uh, you know, our long, our long place in it. I think that uh, one of the topics that people are most curious about in the business community is how they can get their businesses what's going on with them in the county. We have the ability to do this. Um, we cannot take every press release that's sent to us and put it in the paper. Um, that is something that you would see in the past. Uh, someone getting a monthly award or something might go in. We don't have the bandwidth to do that anymore. Um, we tend to focus our reporting stories on uh, uh, things that have the widest impact on the greatest number of people. Um, so if there is a, an acquisition or something like that, we try and report that. Um, we, uh, you know, we, we try, we, we don't do too much with contracts unless they're huge. Um, in the, for the business coverage, the things we focus on most, uh, most are job growth, uh, new businesses uh, that affect a lot of people. We're likely to put more resources into a new restaurant because Annapolis is a restaurant town than we are into a new one person accounting firm. It's not to discount the importance of a one person accounting firm. It's just the number of people, number of readers who'd be affected by it. That's a real quick overview of what we do. Uh, it's a lot more complex than that, obviously. I'm always happy to take questions. Um, and just, I'll say this a couple of times, uh, you know, but um, we are small. So if you email me, it does come to me. There is no assistant filtering me. Um, you can find my email on the uh, website, but it's rhutzel at capgaznews.com. Uh, I would say probably seven times out of 10, if you call the newsroom, I'm the one that answers the phone right now. Um, so I'm very easy to reach and uh, all of my information is on the website. So I will turn it back over to Marty and Mark. Thanks, Rick. So Rick just provided some information about the operation and the journalistic side or editorial side of the business. I would like to now present some of the examples of some of the marketing and research information that we have available and can uh, provide to local businesses. Uh, one of the things that uh, Rick touched upon is that we're owned by the Baltimore Sun and the Tribune actually owns the Baltimore Sun. So I don't know, make a long story short, we're actually owned by the Tribune. So there's a lot of advantages and um, one of those is the marketing information and the data that we have available to provide local businesses. So I always like to tell clients that um, you can think of, of when you're utilizing us and advertising with us, you have a national advertising agency at your disposal at local rates. And, um, and I think that's a really positive part of being part of the Tribune family. Um, so since COVID is such a hot topic of 2020 and 21, I thought it would be interesting to take a look at some of the, some of the findings from our research department that were uh, pertaining to uh, consumer behaviors as a result of COVID. So I'm not going to go through this in detail. We will make these slides available to you, uh, but I did want to touch upon some of the bullet points and highlights of each one of the slides. So I'm going to start with good news that finally after a year of being in lockdown, um, there is... Um, good news on the horizon. Um, it's seen, uh, worrying is starting to subside. I'm sure you guys are witnessing that as well. And that new habits, some of the new habits that are taking shape uh, and consumers are, are getting comfortable with the new normal. So as we move out of COVID and hopefully we're, hopefully we're moving out of COVID, we're gonna be experiencing um, some normalcy, normalcy or the new normalcy as we like to say. And we're also, you're also going to be, um, I guess, catering and, uh, you know, we're going to have to adapt to some of the new normalcies and new habits that people got into as a result of COVID. 46% um, of adults expect things to be back to, to normal. Um, and as people become vaccinated, more and more out of home activities will resume, including shopping, dining, in restaurants, and in-person concerts. Um, you can go to the next slide, Amy. 
So as I mentioned, some of these habits, some of the habits that took place uh, and developed during COVID will continue, including uh, wearing masks, at least for the time being. Um, online shopping will continue to increase. 64% of adults say they feel comfortable shopping online um, and curbside pickup and other conveniences are expected to continue as well. Um, e-commerce is it's also expected to grow. During 2020, e-commerce had a 30% increase over 2019, and that trend is expected to continue through 2025 with a 10 to 20% um, continual increase in e-commerce revenues. Um, you can go to the next slide. Uh, this slide talks about small to mid-sized businesses. Um, as I mentioned, really the theme of this is um, businesses and consumers are becoming much more optimistic. 46% of the small to mid-sized businesses believe that recovery will begin in June, and then an additional 24% of small to mid-sized businesses uh, believe that recovery will begin in the third quarter. So re you know, regardless of where you're sitting, most people do think that by the end of the year, we will be um, much more able to go out and about um, and do business as usual or the new usual. Um, you can go to the next slide. So the last slide that I'm gonna talk about is from a marketing standpoint is that uh, there was a lot of um, people that were willing to try new brands and, a, and do a lot of different things either because they had to do it online or not do it at all. But 77% plan to return to the brand that they used prior to COVID. And I think that's really great news because it shows that um, um, as small to mid-sized businesses, continuing to promote yourself and promote your value and what you do best does um, have sustainability, um, even through um, bumps in the road, as we say. Um, and some of this, um, this is just an example, as I mentioned, of some of the material that we have available. We also have category, category specific information that I didn't want to, I didn't want to get too in the weeds or, or start getting boring, but if you do have questions about your industry specific um, to your business, please feel free to reach out to me because we can get um, that information to you. And it is very, I think, useful. Um, you can go to the next slide. Um, oh yeah, this, this slide is, is the last, is almost the last slide. So this is just talking about the shopping habits will remain post, some of the shopping habits that will remain post COVID, um, purchasing items online, um, rather than going to a physical store, 41% uh, of consumers feel that they will still be shopping online and not going to a physical store. That number I'm sure will decrease as time goes on. Uh, using restaurant delivery, takeout service more often, 36% of consumers at this point in time uh, say that they will continue to take out rather than dine in. Uh, think twice about making purchases, 32% um, of consumers will be have said that they are going to be cautious. And again, I, all these numbers are expected to decline um, in the next few months or at least six months. Um, use contactless payment when possible and shop in store only off peak hours. So that kind of goes to the point about it being a new norm and catering to consumers uh, the way habits and the way they want to, um, to you know, consume uh, products and services. Okay, you can go to the next slide. So how do we reach these people? Uh, the one thing that I really wanna emphasize about the Capital Gazette and being owned by the Baltimore Sun and Tribune is that we're, we're, not, um, your, we're not your uh, grandfather's or great grandfather's newspaper anymore. And the easiest way to look at what we do and we can provide to you is that we can reach any audience that you wanna reach. Um, and we have various platforms to do that. So some of the platforms that, how we do that and some of the platforms we're using to do that are obviously our print product, which is still, um, is very well read. And there's a lot of people that prefer that, that um, platform to get their news and advertising information. Um, obviously digital, we have capitalgazette.com uh, that readership is growing leaps and bounds, especially through COVID. Um, the local community really relied on our coverage of COVID to get their information. And we have a lot of digital products that you can use. Um, so in addition, somewhat of an extension to our digital 
platform is um, what they call programmatic advertising. And probably a lot of you know about that. That's extended reach. We can buy programmatic advertising for you. It's a great way to augment our audience and then get you can get very specific from geo and uh, demographic and other types of uh, targeting criteria. We offer email marketing, which is very popular. Um, you can use our, you can co-brand with us and align with our readers, um, which is um, gets great results for advertisers. We can buy social media for you, search. We have events, we host events. We have an events team that do first class events, uh, produce videos, uh, branded content is, uh, we have, can write articles for you, um, avatorials, not articles, sorry, Rick. Um, uh, we can provide and, and develop contests for you. And uh, we provide reporting, which I think is very important. So with the digital age, we have the top state of the art of reporting where we can really sit down with you and analyze uh, the results of your campaign to see what worked. And just as importantly, and sometimes I think this is more important, um, what didn't work so you can optimize and make changes accordingly. Um, so with that said, um, we would love to uh, open this up to questions to um, and answer a lot of your specific questions. How, uh, there's one from Jennifer. How about coverage for community service events or projects? I think that's for you, Rick. Yeah, we, we do that. Um, we tend to ask for, uh, you know, so let, let's take an example. Um, uh, if a business is out uh, raising funds for a community and um, you know, they are, they, they, it's some type of um, event or something like that. You would ask, you know, the, the group to submit photos and some information on it. And then we'll take that and turn it into a story, short story with some photos. One of the things that we haven't seen much of that in the last years, because many of those events are, are simply not happening, have not been happening, or they've been happening in a way that, you know, we're not able to cover it. Um, so, you know, in terms of, you know, community uh, activity, paying back to the community. We're absolutely happy, happy to share that news with our readers, but we do hope that it'll come from you. Uh, here's another one for you, Rick. How can I get a list of reporters? Uh, their beats, email and cell phone, same for the editor. Uh, all of our information. I mean, if you click on any of our stories, uh, you can, you know, that will give you the, um, uh, the, the individual reporters contact. Um, the, uh, the, we did shut down the how to contact us information on our website after the 2018 shooting. Um, we were getting some unpleasant stuff and we haven't restored it yet. So you can reach individual reporters. In addition, our newsroom telephone number does ring through to me right now. We are working uh, all from our homes at the moment because of uh, COVID. Um, we have seven reporters. Um, if you follow the newspaper, it's pretty easy to uh, see what their beats are. And I am easy to reach both by email and telephone number. If it helps you, my direct line is 410-533-9631. Um, here's another question for you, Rick. Um, SOFO is, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. You are. South Forest Drive. Okay. It's doing Greenscapes on April 24th. Would love coverage for this. We haven't decided what we're going to do with Greenscape this year. Last year, obviously, uh, it was off. There were a few very small scale things that were done. Uh, we're kind of waiting for the list. Uh, Greenscape, for those you who don't know, is the um, Annapolis-led uh, program uh, that does beautification around the city. Um, I don't know the details of what SOFO is doing. Uh, we haven't gotten a list of all the programs. Generally, we go out. Traditionally, we go out and cover that weekend. I think everybody meets at the Moyer Center uh, for supplies and things at the city supplies. Um, so if you want to email me details so I can help make a better informed decision, uh, that's great. We cannot be everywhere. Um, you know, we are a small news organization compared to others. We do ironically have one of the largest newsrooms among newspapers in Maryland. Just shows you what's changed. Um, and so really we have one reporter who is on uh, on Saturday and one reporter who is working on Sunday. If there is breaking news, we do, you know, sort of make some phone calls and get other people out there. But there's one person who works that shift. It's a rotating person. Um, and so we try and decide what we're going to cover 
uh, you know, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, or farther in advance if we know it's a, you know, if we, if we know about something. So at this point, I think we do plan to go out and write about Greenscape. Um, we have in the past relied on people involved in uh, projects that we can't get to, to send us photos and some brief description, and we use that as well. Hey, here's a question. I believe it's for me. What type of events get the most engagement? What type of social media postings get the most interest? Um, it's a great question. So events, um, I think the ones that get the most engagements or, or things that are particular revolve around um, something special within a business, whether that be an anniversary or um, a new hire, new product, new service, those types of things seem to, to do the best. Um, as far as, uh, what was the second part of that question? From the social media postings? The best way to do social media postings is to be social. I mean, it's, you know, as you see, I'm sure as you're going through your own posts and your friends post, you see people are, the conversations that take place or continuous conversations to really do social media prop effectively from the it has to be on a continuous basis so it's you really need someone to be posting for your business on a daily basis um, if not more um, we actually so rick's going to kill me for saying this but another unique way of doing social media and buying social media is we do have co-branding opportunities um, that you can co you can reach out and co-brand with the Capital Gazette and reach our unique social media audience. That is something that you can't buy anywhere else. It is very restrictive and there's um, it's a it's a premium product and it does all the content has to be approved. So I'm hoping that answers your question. Let me uh, uh, kind of ask a question that kind of relates to a couple of things that were already asked. Um, I guess directed to, to Rick a little bit is um, got folks who are interested about you know their business opening or an event or activity sending you information you know some pictures as you said description I mean what is the information that you'd like to have you'd like them to have a, a full blown press release or do they yeah. just I mean I, it doesn't have to be written that formally but yes I mean really we want you you know we we as as a long term policy the capital long before my editorships we had a policy that we don't cut ribbing cuttings because they're a celebration. Um, and, and we try not to run too many pictures of them. If you send them to us and it's about your business is open, we try and share that with our readers. Um, really, we're more interested in the people behind a business. So if Mr. and Mrs. Smith are opening up a new, uh, uh, you know, a, a, some type of new um, boat service, sending us a picture, you know, in your boat yard is more interesting than a ribbon cutting where you have the mayor or the alderman or the councilman or the county executive come out and stand for two seconds on one side of the picture. Um, we ask for uh, some pretty basic information, what the business is, what it does, who owns the business or who owns the franchise and how people can get up with it. We will share that information with readers. Um, Another question, I am opening a new location for our business in June, Rehab to Reform. Congratulations. It's on Forest Drive. What options are available for new business, um, press release, feature, advertising? Um, Rick, I'll let you take the first part of that. Uh, well, I think I just explained how you can communicate to us when your business opens and we try and share that with readers. In terms of features, uh, actually assigning a reporter to you know, delve into what your business is, um, we do those rarely for new businesses. Um, it depends on what they are. Again, it goes back to the sort of the, the, the rubric that I said at the very beginning of this conversation. We sort of use our reporting resources where they can write about things that affect the most people. Um, so a feature on a business opening, just because it's opening is something that we probably aren't able to do. Um, if there is more of a story to that, uh, you know, if, if, if you know, I, I, what was the name of the business? It was Rehab? Rehab to Perform. Rehab to Perform. Uh, I assume that's a physical rehabilitation business? Yes. Yes. Um, and it is your fourth location. You know, so I'm curious what your story is, whether we do a story on it depends on, on that. Um, there's this sort of ambiguous uh, thing that you learn in journalism through experience and trial and error, and that is news judgment. 
um, you know, what is a story that readers will be interested in. Um, and, and that's kind of a hard thing to explain. Um, it has to do with, you know, the personal elements of your story, your personal story. Um, it has to do with, uh, you know, uh, reader, what readers are interested in. And, and we watch that very closely. Um, so that's the thing that will decide whether we do a feature on it, a story on it. Um, but we are happy to share information about your business suffering. Yes, and from an advertising standpoint, we have a we do a lot of we have a lot of great ideas around openings and special events of that nature. I will get your contact information from Amy, and uh, we'll contact you personally um, to go into a lot more detail. Um, thank you. Next question is the status of the capital with potential purchase. Well, what is the status? I can address that, and it's not because I have any close-up knowledge of this. I don't know if there's anyone here who's involved in merger and acquisitions, but if, you, if there is or if you know somebody who's involved in that, uh, you know at this point we're talking about different flavors of money. Uh, there are two competing offers. Uh, first off, let me a little corporate background. Um, we are part of Baltimore Sun Media, as I think we explained, along with the Baltimore Sun, Carroll County Times, and then a range of weeklies in the area outside of the Capital Gazette newspaper group. Uh, our group is uh, the Capitol, the Maryland Gazette, Bowie Blade News, Crofton, West County. Um, and, and all together, you know, there's about 75,000 print readers there. Marty, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, some of those are paid subscriptions. Some of those are not. Um, Bowie is the one paper we have that's outside of Anne Arundel County. And uh, it is fiercely loved in, in Bowie. Um, and so there's other papers in our region. Baltimore Sun Media is one of nine newspaper groups that are owned by Tribune Publishing. Um, Tribune uh, is, the, is the company that is centered on the Chicago Tribune. That's where the name comes from. Uh, it, is, uh, it came out of bankruptcy in 2014 and we were the very first thing uh, that they bought, we being the capital. Uh, it also owns papers in sort of our region. It owns the Virginia uh, pilot, uh, the Virginian pilot, which is the largest print publication in uh, the state of Virginia. It's down in Norfolk, uh, Virginia Beach, uh, and the Daily Press down there as well. They've combined operations. Uh, the Morning Call in, uh, in, in Allentown, and then some up in New England. They own, I think, the New York Post. I get the Post and the, and the Daily News confused all the time. Um, and then a couple papers in Florida. Uh, Chicago is, is, is the big paper. They did own the Los Angeles Times, the San Diego Union that was sold about three years ago. Um, the owner of that is still uh, is a major shareholder in Tribune. So Alden Capital is a hedge fund um, that uh, uh, buys newspapers under the theory that they are a distressed asset. If you don't understand the business model of, of newspapers, traditionally it was funded by advertising, uh, print advertising in particular. If you go back and Look at the capital in the in in the in the 20s and 30s and 40s, 50s, 60s, even 70s. You know, you see giant full-page ads for car dealers and grocery stores, um, and the prices for 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 food is always interesting. You know, sirloin steak for 79 cents a pound. Um, but uh, uh, so the the company Alden purchased uh, the the like a third of the company from a previous shareholder, uh, and. Early, I think last year was early, last year earlier this year made a bid to buy all of the shares and take the company private. Now Alden's business model, demonstrated through its other newspaper group, uh, has been to cut resources for papers to make them as lean as possible and make them live within the budget of their advertising base. A lot of advertising has gone nationally to uh, places like uh, Facebook, uh, and so. That's the challenge that Marty and his team face, keeping that, that financing for our news organization uh, going. And so as that business model has changed, a lot of newspapers have not been able to keep up and have folded. I, I don't know the numbers, but I know in the last year, there's been about 1,500 uh, journalism jobs disappear. Uh, there's just fewer, fewer news organizations, print news organizations out there. Um, and so because of the beneficial impact of news organizations on a community, we were talking before this began, new, you know, newspapers do things like report on the city budget. 
It keeps taxes low because people are aware of what their government's doing. There's a whole range of things like that. We're like little democracy machines. We pop out issues for people to, to think about. You know, we cover things that are they're good, that need to be celebrated and, and done more of. We cover things that are bad, that need to be fixed. And so we're really part of the community. As newspapers vanish a little bit, uh, shrink a little bit, uh, that function is disappearing. And so you see communities that are tied together because they have a common set of facts uh, that, are, that are put out by the news organization, the newspaper. Those common set of facts are now split in a million different ways because somebody on Facebook or somebody with a blog has a different set of news values or a different set of news practices than, than a news organization like ours. So, Tribune, so Alden made a bid for Tribune um, and then uh, um, a man named Stuart Bainham. He's, he's uh, part of the family that uh, created and currently owns Choice Hotels, which is a couple of brands. He's a former state delegate. Um, made a bid for, as a part of that package, went out, reached out to Alden and wanted to buy Baltimore Sun Media, which includes us. Um, I don't know how much he knows about us. He's clearly interested in the Baltimore Sun. It's the big newspaper in Maryland. And so uh, there were negotiations that was assumed that that would close about the same time as Alden took over the larger company uh, sometime at the end of the second quarter. Those talks, that deal broke down uh, because according to Bainham, the operating agreement, which is what a new company would pay Tribune for services that they still need until they can get up and run as an independent uh, was so expensive that it, it made the deal far more or the purchase far more than, than the purchase price. So he has uh, cobbled together some investors uh, from around the country to, to uh, make an alternate offer. It is a higher per share offer. I think the difference is 1750 and 1850. Um, but if you're into merger and acquisitions or you know somebody, you know there's all sorts of different flavors of money. So the special committee reviewing these two offers uh, admits that the Bainham offer is superior because of the higher price but some of the money they would use to do this is Tribune's own money. I, that's beyond my understanding how they can do that, but it's perfectly legal. And so they have voted to keep their recommendation at the moment with the Alden bid. I don't think this is over. I think this will play out through the rest of this quarter. Um, I think there is a real desire. One of the things you're seeing is that other people with uh, means of that sort have reached out to Bainham and said, I would like to take part, I would buy the Florida papers from you if this is possible. So if, if Bainham does it, I think you could see a breakup of Tribune. I think that's likely. Um, it's still likely that if Alden buys it, he may sell off pieces, they may sell off pieces of the paper. Um, the capital is unlikely to be broken off separately. I think it's you know almost assured that uh, we stay with Baltimore Sun Media. And not only because we've merged our business aspects of it, you know, our payroll is the same, our distribution is the same. Uh, Marty works with people in Baltimore. I work with people in Baltimore. Um, but because it's much harder to keep a small print publication going now. Um, and we, while we are, I think, a very valuable and lucrative part of Baltimore Sun Media, we are a small one. That's kind of where it is. It's a confusing story. Um, I do know it's really fascinating. One thing that's fascinating is that uh, the unions involved in Tribune, uh, Baltimore Sun is a unionized newsroom. My newsroom is in the process of negotiating a union contract. Um, they really pressed for local ownership, thinking it would be more supportive. Um, Mr. Bainham has talked about a nonprofit model where he would actually invest in the news organizations give them more resources, let them expand or grow back uh, or find new ways and then create up a non set of nonprofit that would fund it going forward. Nonprofit newsrooms sometimes run like this. 30% of the revenue comes from advertising. 30% comes from subscriptions. 30% comes from grants. Um, you're seeing that in other parts of the country. So it's a really interesting time. Um, you know, the, 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 you know, the curse may live an interesting time. So we don't know what's going to happen. We're, we're waiting to see just like everybody else. Stay tuned, right? We'll tell you. I mean, we're putting the, as we get it, we're putting the news on our business page because it's a business story. Well, we're all just so uh, inside information. We're hopeful. We're all um, praying and keeping our fingers crossed that Bainham is the purchaser <laughs> and not the Auden group. 
Um, next question, it's, well, it's a follow-up question with Joshua. I think he, this is for you, Rick. He's talking, and again, it's um, a great uh, testament to his business. We are um, Inc. 5000 business that was supposed to open their fifth location during the pandemic. Um, last summer and finally opening in, in June. This will be our second year on the Inc. 5000 um, list. So congratulations for that. What, what is the business? That's the rehab. Oh, that is the rehab. I think that's great. Send me some information on it. Uh, my email is rhutzel at capgaznews.com. Um, you know, you can, you, it's pretty easy to find if you search for me and it's on our website as well. And I'm just going to circle back to the, the question about social media, because there is a couple other things that I think are important to note. One is if you're just uh, posting to your followers, um, you probably know this, but you're not getting, you're only getting to about, or that, that post or a given post is only going out to about 10% of your followers. So that's why it is important to augment and um, use, uh, if it's not the capital, use some type of uh, vendor or um, digital agency that really knows how to um, target and get in front of a, a much uh, broader audience than your followers. So that's another thing that I would advise. And then getting back to what you would actually post, again, I would also um, include making that topical. So talking about specific products or services, talking about awards, talking about um, you know, sees what's ever going on in the season to make yourself not only known for what you do, but as a subject matter expert. So I just thought I would add that. Um, let's see, I don't know if there's any other questions. Um, Carol uh, asked a question about affiliate marketing. She's not a brick and mortar store. And I know that Amy answered you. I also will get your contact information. There's a lot of things that we can do. And there's advertisers that we work with that are always looking for someone to partner with. So hopefully we can help you out with that. I think that's all the questions. Any, is there any other questions? Oh yeah. Uh, we want to keep the capital local. Would, what would it take to to uh, get you guys a local office? I know Rick likes that question. <laughs> yeah, uh, so those of you who haven't followed this the, the, are, are my colleagues in the union. I am not a member of the union. Staged a protest that the Washington Post covered. Um, and uh, I, 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 I will say that I, I was irritated because it repeated a myth. Um, the Maryland Gazette, our historic paper, uh, was the paper that reported the, the, Constitu the Declaration of Independence. And given the, the difference in time and travel, then it took until July 11th for it to appear in the Maryland Gazette. Um, you know, we actually know the name of the person who rode from Philadelphia to Annapolis. And so the story has grown up and I, I, I got to believe I, it, it actually originated. I, I've tracked it down in a Baltimore Sun story following the shootings um, that it appeared on page three uh, because it was not local news. Um, I have, I, I mean, it just, it's one of the, one of the sillier things I've ever heard. It paired, appeared on page three uh, because uh, the, um, the, the, the paper at the point was put together with lead type by hand. And, um, uh, you know, it, it, they weren't going to break it up for, to re, they, there was no remaking the front page back back then. It was only four pages long. So they had this protest that, you know, because it closed, here's the truth. And that is uh, Tribune Pub and Baltimore Sun Media paid quite a bit of money um, after the shooting to put us in an office out on Admiral Cochran Drive. Um, it was very secure. Uh, it was a, an investment in the future. Um, and we closed its operations, just like a lot of people, in March 2020, uh, when the pandemic was declared. Uh, and it became clear that we were all in for something that we had never seen before. By September, by August of, the, of that year, the realization began to dawn on corporate executives that it would be more than a year before we went back into that newsroom. Uh, we are currently, we currently don't have a date for being able to go back and work out of the office. Um, my own personal projection based on some people who are in other news media is that we're probably looking at September before that's a real thing. 
And part of the reason is just everybody else. We don't want to spread. We didn't want to spread the virus uh, among ourselves. Uh, newspapers are considered critical manufacturing, uh, and they did try really hard to keep the virus from spreading among pressmen. People actually run the printing press. Um, still happened. Um, but they wanted the news people and the advertising people and the support people to stay away from the buildings so that we could continue to physically put out the paper. So the decision was made to close our newsroom and several others because it allowed us to keep everybody working as revenue went down. It was very clearly a decision of people over property. And while it kicked me in the gut because I am a, I am a product of, a new, of the Annapolis newsroom, um, it was absolutely the right thing to do. Will we get our own newsroom back? I think it is far more likely under the nonprofit scenario than it is under the Alden scenario. Um, I agree that the uh, newspaper does need a local presence um, and we will have one in some form or another, even if it's just you know, uh, um, a presence in somebody else's office. Um, we have yet to cross that yet and figure out how we're gonna do it. It is complicated by the fact um, that someone tried to kill us and uh, we have to have security wherever we are. We can't just set up in a coffee shop and say, hey, we're in the coffee shop um, um, because of, of what happened in 2018. And so we have a presence in Annapolis. Uh, we have reporters who work here. I am here. We have photographers who are here every day. Um, the office is something that if, if, if I get a chance to talk to the new owners, it's something certainly I'm going to ask for. Um, but it's not like we had an offer from the county executive. They, there's a, if you know where the Arundel Center is, um, uh, you probably don't know that it has a basement that is prone to flooding. I didn't know that either. They supposedly have fixed it and they offered to set up a newsroom down there. Kind of awkward for us to cover a county administration that is our landlord. Um, so there are, there are solutions out there. We're not at the point where we have to figure out what to do yet because we're still working from working from homes. So I'm with you. I want to. I want a newsroom in Annapolis too. Don't know that. Don't know that it will happen. I hope it will. Me too. Um, well, I, and I'm just going to add to that that it's really not. It's, it's not really uncommon anymore. Whether that's right, wrong, or indifferent for um, newspapers, newsrooms to be working remotely. All, all businesses. I mean, I'm sure some of you know someone whose company closed the office or shut down the office and they've said, you know, we maybe don't need to have it open or maybe we can do the smaller office and share desks. Um, you know, the, uh, the impact on the commercial real estate business is, is good, is potentially large. Um, and, and there are a lot of commercial landlords in this county who could find themselves with empty spaces. Don't know. That's a great example of um, one of the new norms and, and how yep. people are going to, um, kind of emerge after COVID. I think, um, I think uh, there'll be a lot of people doing a lot of hybrid type of um, office work. So are there any other questions for us? No? All right, well, if you can think of any, please feel free to reach out to uh, Rick or myself. We would be more than happy to answer them or you can reach out to Mark and Amy as well um, and they'll get the questions to us. Otherwise, thank you so much um, for um, being here today. We really enjoyed it. And um, hopefully you got some good information from us. Uh, I am very easy to reach. Anyone can find me. Yeah, they are very, very accessible. And, and again, as a community um, living here and, and operating your business here, you know, we're very fortunate to have the newspaper, but be more fortunate more fortunate to have Rick and, and Marty is at the helm. Uh, so thank you guys for taking the time today um, to chat. I think it was very informative for, for folks on the line um, today, and we'll uh, get the information out. Um, you know, because again, we'll send out everybody the PowerPoint, and also we take these and we put them up on the on the website so people who couldn't make it can come in and, and watch the re recording. Um, so some good valuable information. So I want to say uh, thank you to everybody.